Hi, I'm the Wandering Newbie, and it's time for more Record Keeper. Today, we have the Final Fantasy XII event, Dancing Heart, which is based around Pinello. Which, honestly, may be one of the more confusing decisions to base an entire event around the most non-character in a video game ever. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> uh, either way. This is one of the longer events, and, um, yeah, we have a boss rush to start off with, uh, just making sure my, yep, my numbers are all good and everything, so let's get moving. Um, the, the boss rush this time around is sort of uh, centered. Uh, you know, I got, to, I got, I got to test audio levels real fast. Okay, yeah, all right, that's good. Um, the pulse rush is revolved around Wraith Hall's tomb, uh, with the first boss being Gruda, the second boss being Belias. This is probably one of the most rude boss rushes because Garuda here only hittable by ranged attacks. Uh, Belias being a completely normal boss. So, yeah, that's mean. It, it definitely took a bit to sit down and figure out a workable team for this, but uh, nonetheless, I did find one. Though I didn't like the, the moves I had to use, but we'll see. More of that in a little bit. Uh, the team itself... Really? Huh. Give me a moment. Let me hear that on my end. Let me give it the, all right, yeah, okay. If you're saying don't worry about it, it's just you. All right. Yeah, because I'm looking at the audio levels here and I'm, I'm definitely coming in about uh, a little over the music, though maybe, eh, fuck it. Yeah, audio is fake and dumb. Uh, f well, you have you have put the seed into my head, so now I have to see. Well, I actually just checked the, the stream itself, and everything seems to be fine there. Um, nothing changed in the mixer options. Everything should be fine. Eh, fuck it. Let's just keep going. Literally nothing changed from last week. Let's discuss the build. Ah, eh, fuck it. <laughs> uh, let's discuss the build once we actually get into here. So, uh, the big thing here is, of course, I'm not going to adjust volume. Uh, I've had it the same for a year, over a year. Nothing just changed out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> either who. 
Uh, anywho, anyway, whatever. So the big thing here is that you need to debuff the uh, Gruda and be able to do damage to it. So you need some sort, some form of magic or ranged attacks in order to hit it reliably. Uh, bows, daggers, spells, these are all pretty good for this. Uh, Bosh is going to be actually useless in this first fight. That's just that, that's, that's how it goes. There we go. Twelve events are always so interesting because twelve had so many like weird gimmicks and stuff like that that um it's always interesting to see how they trans transfer into record keeper Mainly this, the, the Gruda fight was um, a very odd fight in uh, in the original game because the boss I believe was near impossible except unless you used a certain item in the fight and then it became doable. And that's about it, that, that, that was the Gruda fight. Uh, they decided to add on to that by making it ranged only, which is extremely annoying in Record Keeper when people, like, you have to make abilities or use weapons that have the range status on them, or else it doesn't work. But yeah, the, uh, the Gruta boss here actually isn't too complex, uh, deals only in uh, physical attacks. So you bring a ranged person with uh, power breakdown, full break, and a protect gut, and you're fine. Yeah, dagger toss is ranged, you're throwing a dagger. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could have technically used uh, both here. That would have been a choice. I chose not to, though. <laughs> main reason for uh, not bringing both here was so that I could have magic breakdown for this boss. Now, uh, Belias is a bit different. It does have physical attacks. In fact, it busts its physical attacks on turn one. Uh, however, I believe it's more prone to use its magic, and its magic is entirely fire-based, so if you bring a bunch of fire accessories, this is sort of a non-fight. The 
big thing that we're actually waiting for here is for the boss. Oh, I always forget that about Belias. Uh, so what you just saw there is Belias actually cuts in half all other uh, elements besides uh, water. Which is a aspect of him that I always forget. But with something like Leviathan, uh, Water Jaw, engulfing twin strikes, and stuff like that, uh, he shouldn't actually stay around that long. Leviathan, right? <laughs> what about what we have on screen? That one. It's pretty good. Yeah, there's Fire Raja. And I have minimal magic protection, so you can see how that can actually put a dent in a, uh, a newer player. But yeah, boss rush, um, more tricky than difficult, actually. Uh, neither of the bosses really have a huge move set. It's just one is ranged only, so you do have to plan around that. Thank you for the follow. Uh, how is the audio, by the way? Everything seems fine on my end. Maybe I was just talking under my breath or something along those lines. Alright, that's what I figured. Yeah, um, it's really Record Keeper. Has some weird audio balancing issues. Uh, I reference... Anything from the Dissidia collab events is always way fucking louder than the rest of the game. Um, yeah, just Record Keeper's got audio balancing problems. What's my plan for the event 200 fights? <sighs> I was, I've, I've, I've been thinking about them for months. I've been thinking about them slash trying not to think about them. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be a slow build up uh, the um, bonus fights whenever they introduce a new difficulty is always finding where it fits into my style um, I want to try at least once with only super soul breaks. Just to see if I can pull it off. Though I have heard that the first two are exceptionally difficult. So those might push me a bit further. But for sure, definitely gonna be seeing some super soul breaks. If we go the whole nine yards and we start using bursts, so be it. I mean, at that point, we're hitting difficulty 200 you know, like, we're getting to fights where they extremely expect you to have stuff. I can only go so far with the, the minimalistic strategies. Um, like, trust me, I've been putting a lot of thought into this crap. Uh, either way, for now we have ba Bagamnan. <laughs> Bagamnan. 
That's a mouthful. Uh, and his cohorts. I'm just gonna call them the mercenaries, because that's what they are. Um, so, the big thing is that you're fighting all four of them at once, but the very nice thing is they have a, they all have a weakness to water, which again makes Leviathan an extremely, extremely strong summon for this. Uh, they also throw a whole bunch of stuff at you, including uh, water AoEs, thunder AoEs, and also I believe some fire and ice as well. Uh, so they got everything on their side to counter your stuff. That said, as I stated, um, we have a realm that actually has a natural dancer in it. So that's fantastic for this fight. Modifred is still ridiculous, even to this day. Um, we have a dancer, and then everybody else is kind of decked out in AoE of various types. Uh, Bosh. I actually made... made this. We'll see how this works, though I think they take half damage from other elements. But, you know, fuck it. I, I'm, I've never seen Aegis Strike, actually, so that'll be fun for me. Fucking nightmare dungeons use the uh, the twelve music so much that whenever I hear one of those songs, something sort of triggers in the back of my head of like, hmm. No, this is wrong. I don't like this. Right, hydro burst is also a great choice. Insider secret, I put in pauses for cutting the video. <laughs> Alright, the boys. They're back in town. Now, he is the most deadly physical player member. Uh, we'll smack you, get taunt up, and we get that multi-break and that protect you up. Just to make sure we hit the proper conditions. I don't think they're going to last. If you want me to be honest. Hit our weaknesses. Hit that, hit that, and hit that button. Yeah, that's weird. You're, you're right, that is weird. They changed the formation from what it usually is. It's usually a diamond formation, top, bottom, left, right. They switched to. That's bizarre. God, just a little bit of help. Yeah, these guys don't have too much health, so they fall pretty quickly. Oof. 
you know, multi-target fights, lower HP pools, so on and so forth. We saw a bunch of that last event. Uh, so yeah, if you can taunt their physical attacks, lower their magic, you can really punch through them pretty quickly. Nice. Apocalypse Shield is really fucking good. Wait, four announcements? Hashmel dancing, new relics. Hoofa. Uh. Oh, this is re God, they're like rotating these in such a weird way. Alright, so this one is Slit. <laughs> Slit. Um. The big thing about him is entirely physical. Uh, can give itself haste, and uh, weak to fire, but very vulnerable to a number of status effects. Though I'm just going to punch through him as hard as I can. We have a uh, dispel for uh, the haste that he'll put up, uh, steel power, and you know what's? I I fucking missed that that I put steel steel power and power breakdown. There we go. Let's destroy this guy even harder. Again, this guy I fought in the last week three times. I did the story fight, I did the elite fight, then I did the event fight. This guy's not hard. Perfect, that's exactly who I wanted to be on top. But yeah, uh, this guy's entirely physical. So, if you power break down, full break, protect, maybe even throw in a taunt, you're not going to be seeing too much damage from him. Oh, whoops. I got the wrong materia on Penella. <laughs> Whatever. It's not going to make much of a difference, I think. I'm one crystal away from honing. Oh, piss. All right. That's this guy's gimmick. <laughs> I literally forget that every single time I fight him, of just like, oh right, you can't hit him with other uh, piss. He's literally just fire. How do I do this every time?
Whatever, he's gonna explode. He has like a weird thing of like he'll jump out of the water every now and then and become more dangerous, but I think every time I kill him before that happens. His defense gets somehow lower when he's out of the water. Noted. Uh. <laughs> That, that is in fact the thing that he can do, is jump out of the water. I'll have to take your word for it. Yeah, that's, that's a triple plus. I guess. Remember when Triple Plus meant something? Back when it was a tree that kicked your butt? Okay. Enough about that, though. Uh, our first ultimate is Darkness of Ages. And it's Judge Bergen and his cohorts. Uh... The big thing about Bergen is... Okay, so. There's a lot of physical here. However... <laughs> you're right. Triple Plus does still mean something when you're working your way up. That's entirely true. Uh, so, uh, Bergen... It, I want to say is oddly magic-based. Uh, but either way... Um... He begins the battle with protecting shell on, uh, so you need to get rid of that. Uh, his judges will use water spout, which is an AOE water attack. And Judge Bergen gets really aggressive when he gets low. You want to magic break down everyone, but you also want to power break down everyone, because they have physical attacks that can do a number. Uh, Bergen also, though, has no resistance to slow or blind. So slowing him is a great, great thing to do. Uh, the judges will frequently try and buff Bergen with Protect and, sh and Shell. So, that is a double reason to have Dispel. Or, Banishing Strike. Uh, the conditions here are lower, Attack Magic, and Blind. So, I have a an interesting thing for this. So, Bergen is the only one you actually need to kill. So we are going to dispel him, we are going to reflect him, then we're going to cast Shelga, then we're going to cast Protect, and uh, we're going to slow and blind him and go to town. Yeah. Uh, I saw this in a video, and I was like, this strategy is way too interesting not to try out. So it's going to be interesting to see how feasible this is. Uh, again, Bergen is the only one we need to kill, and I'm fairly sure he has reduced HP for group fight. So, uh, just trying to assassinate him is actually the, the, uh, the quickest way to go about this. If you can do something to negate the other judges and you just go right after, I did not get stats. I didn't get stats. It's been a while since I've done that.
Nice. Yeah. Get that good boy going. Everybody loves a good boy. Actually, to be honest, uh, for as much as I like to sing the praises of game good boy, you should really uh, buff whoever you have stuff for. But if you have stuff for the good boy, yeah, fucking go right ahead. No, oh, both of the SSBs, that's extremely good. No, two different people, but yes. Oh, the OSB, yeah, no, 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 yeah. <laughs> both that good boy. So the real tricky thing here is uh, finding the correct combination of abilities. thing is that the soldiers do actually move a little slowly uh, all things considered and with Zidane taunting up top we're pretty much in a very good situation for uh, dealing with anything I do love that casting Reflect on an opponent is a 100% chance. It really feels like the kind of thing that should be able to miss. So, uh, periodically now, um, Pretty much every turn, one of these judges is going to use uh, Water Spout. I know they do it for the first, for the second, third, and fourth turn. They go, you know, top, bottom, using Water Spout. Uh, I don't actually know what happens after that. But we will, uh, we'll see how long this guy actually keeps up. Lunge is the real... Actually, I think our taunt wore off already. Holy crap, that doesn't last very long, does it? Um, I'm interested to see, uh, how well this Swift spell actually does. Bergen doesn't seem to have a lot of health, all things considered. Ooh, I'd like that to be a little higher, but I can deal. That is why we have two sources of damage. better. <laughs> Those numbers are much higher than the other ones. 
Therefore, I like them. Alright, that should be the last spout for now. I was wrong. Hmm. Medica might not be bad for this, or a way to take out the uh, the judges. Perhaps rushdown is not, in fact, the best strategy. But we'll see. Maybe I'm overreacting. It seems like they've recovered pretty quickly already. So now he is in uh, chain cast mode. And I think Zidane's gonna get the uh, killing blow right here. All right, rush down strategy, pretty effective, all things considered. He gets a little hairy when those wa water spouts start uh, going off, but. Aside from that, it works. Oh right, that's why uh, Alpha Nod had such lower damage because he didn't have a magic booster on. Oh, uh, you're just hot second here. Okay. So, uh, big things here <laughs> is this, uh, this alt plus. Um, Shemhazi, Shem, Shem, Shemhazai, Shemhazai. So this is a barrier shift boss, and it has all those really annoying things that a barrier shift boss does. The nice thing about this boss, and um, I saw this when I was watching videos, but I want to confirm. I want to confirm in this execution. I believe this boss always, always shifts from fire to ice, to lightning, back to fire. It is a rotation, as opposed to a random shift. Um, other things aside from that is uh, it can haste itself, it does short fuse to cast spells faster, which is actually a big thing. So it'll haste, enrage, you actually want to remove that haste immediately, because it does something like, um, <laughs> yeah. Or bring Shantoto. Uh, the big thing, though, to think about. Do not bring Banishing Strike. Because it absorbs all elements that it's not currently weak to. So, you will heal it with your Banishing Strike. Uh, it does some AoE with Ultimate Scourge. Uh, which also ignores resistance. So, oofa, am I right? <laughs> You do have to at least hit the fire resistance. Fire weakness, I should say. Um, so. Actually, the sad thing it, uh, is Bart's OSB only hits one of those. Uh, Bart's OSB hits fire, water, earth, and wind, and the barrier goes uh, fire, ice, lightning. 
Yeah. That's the unfortunate thing about Barto is me. So anyway. Kuja here will be hitting the fire in the ice. Balthier will steal power and do Tempest Shot, which should do a ton of damage. Um, Onion Knight will be our Breakdown-er. Alphanod is going to Shelga, Dispel when the haste comes up, and other than that, we'll be healing with a passive Materia. Yeah, at least you learned now. <laughs> and uh, Selfie will be doing a Protectia, uh, because this boss does have an AoE punch, uh, so you do want to be debuffing that as well. Sorry, just uh, adjusting some file names. Yes, good. I mean, their alt pluses are one stamina. That's why I will always say Come up with a strategy and give it an attempt. What are you losing out of all of it? You're losing three minutes of stamina. That's not a big hit. Ults are the uh, the real the real hurdle because that's 60 stamina. Um, that's the one that hurts. I mean, that's understandable. Okay, so immediately we want to get that up. That. We want to steal. We want to Shelga. That haste isn't too deadly right now. So we can leave that up for now. The Shelga is more important for when the boss starts throwing out spells. I've always been a really big fan of the uh, Idolin music from 12. Oh right, I should also emphasize that he can do silence. And it's extremely rude. Right, so we can fire right now. There, all right, we should be taking way less damage for a period. So does he switch to ice? Holy shit, okay. We can utilize this. Oh, she, oh. You know, I think you're right. I think you, this one is female. Hard to tell with the everlasting uh, hell beings, though, right? 
All right, it is a barrier rotation, not a barrier switch. Oh, he fuck. All right. Yeah. All right. Main character, here to fuck up the day. I mean, look at his stats real quick. I stacked him. Where can I actually hold off on this Alpha Nod? That way we can remove the haste as soon as it happens. Ooh, Scourge is really not what I need to be seeing constantly. You know, I think that's fine to hit. Ah. It jumped the gun a little bit. You gotta turn pronto. That's a good double cast. He'll be good. They're good, they're good, they're fine, they're okay. They can take it. That's fine. That's also fine. <laughs> Definitely could have fit in a recast of the Roaming Warrior, that's for sure, but pulled it off. Oofa, uh, close one though. Uh, yeah, that strategy works out pretty, pretty handily, actually. Uh, I really like the most of that. So, uh, Tempest Snipe, uh, Chain Fireaga, Chain Blazaga. Note that it is a rotation barrier, not a random barrier. That's the big thing to note. Yeah, I got majorly fucked up because the dispel was mistimed. Um. I, uh, I took a risk on casting the Dispel early to try and cancel it to the haste immediately, and that did not work out for me. Um, for reference, uh, in game time, of course, not real time, because real time gets stopped by spell casts and everything. 
Uh, when the boss is haste, when the boss is not hasted, it is about a 1.3 seconds between spells. When the boss is hasted, it is about 1.6. It literally cuts the cast time in half. So the boss being hasted is one of the worst things you can actually have in that fight. Since uh, chain cast uh, removes the <laughs> the casting time on spells, so it's literally just the amount of time it takes for that AT bar B bar to fill up. Okay, the uh, the mercenaries are back. Uh, the biggest biggest difference here is uh, ultimate water spout, ultimate lunge, and uh, ultimate thunderstorm. Aside from that, uh, you can silence people, which is sort of recommended. You can also slow people, which is also pretty recommended. Or you can just beat them down real fast, uh, which is what our plan is. Uh, the other big thing to note is, while they're not Mandragoras, they do have a Mandragora-like property in that every time one of the lesser mercenaries dies, they'll buff uh, Bagam. Uh, I think Hill, uh, from right to left, they do Protect, Shell, and Haste. But yeah, uh, they keep that weakness to water, so Leviathan is fantastic for this. You'll probably be doing 80k a hit. I believe the HP in this is somewhere around 50,000 total, each one of the lesser mercenaries has about uh, 120 and Begum himself has about 150. Mind you, the faster that you kill each mercenary, the smoother the battle goes because you are taking less damage. So, I have two uh, basic strategies for this fight. Um, we'll see which one works better. Uh, strategy one is uh, a summoner. A summoner. And healer, healer, healer. <laughs> Uh, specifically, Selfie has Curaga, Curaja, uh, Pinello has Curada, and Kate Sith has the passive uh, heal. Uh, we got Dances to take care of that damage, and uh, Ashoga, Protectka for that stuff. Ash will be casting our Roaming Warrior turn one. I um not really holding back this time because I'm kind of fed up with stupid alt double pluses these last couple weeks. I'm ready to be done in a reasonable time frame for once. Oops. There we go. Uh, that didn't go anywhere. There we go. Okay, oh man, 
I'm in love with those ATB bars. So I do believe they actually go physical first. So uh, Pinello is probably gonna take a bunch of damage. Luckily, luckily, I put a big HP boost materia or accessory on her. One that actually has synergy. So I believe she got something along the lines of a thousand more HP. And we actually got all of her defenses up right off the bat. The only thing we don't have is full breakdance. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, that's an acceptable turn one. Nobody's really hurt, so we're gonna save that Curata for now. Uh, but we can have the Pinello defend. Because if she keeps taunting, that means she'll take less damage. Nice. That's pretty decent numbers. Not max damage, but I'll take it. No problem. I'm glad that people will find my guides to be super useful. The weird thing here is I'm pretty sure Bagam is supposed to have less or way more health than the other ones, but it seems like Oh no, he's a his bars a bit to the back. Uh, all right, now they have uh, they have perhaps stopped fucking around. Maybe there's a bit of lag because there's so many sprites on screen that are moving and popping around. Uh, but yeah, some of these summons seem to be lagging out a little bit. Not too bad, but just a little bit. I feel so I'm getting really good RNG on the attacks. Yeah. I think that's a good confirmation right there. Holy crap. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They hit like trucks. Luckily, we should be able to take a bunch of them out right here. Yeah, okay, that's a party buff. Oh. Oh. Rip. Fight should not last that much longer. Yeah, that is entirely the great buff. 
Hufa! <laughs> That's a win, I guess. RNG may have been a bit kind there. Uh, but yeah, that strategy does work. On paper. Like, that was pretty smooth. Uh, Multi-healer is definitely a thing. Like, Curata, uh, definitely recommended. Um, if not, Ultra Cure, Curaja, anything that you can actually fit in there. Uh, <laughs> Selfie is a crater in the ground right now. Um... If you have a Medica, uh, definitely Dr. Mog's that. Uh, anything that can give you a buffer shield, e either stone skin or HP buffer, uh, those are both fantastic, but you can blitz those guys down extremely fast if you build for it. Uh, and I think that is probably the simplest strategy. Um, the other thing you can do is you can slow them, you can silence them, that stops your magic attacks, it stops them from punching you as much. That is also a very viable strategy. Ooh. Yeah, the other strategy is, is actually really gimmicky, but I wanted to go with this one first because it seemed more reliable and I actually don't have the party set up for the other one. Um, but they're vulnerable to silence and they're vulnerable to slow, so... Yeah, it, uh, the silence would prevent the uh, the great buffs, which is obviously a big boon. So what you do is you go in there with uh, Steel Time or Mug Time, because it's 100% chance, and Silence Gut. And you tag the two guys with Vox first, which I think are the back row guys. Uh, and you start slowing guys and, Vo and Silence going them. Uh, then you use Penalty Snipe. That's the reason why I didn't want to use it. But, Penalty Snipe gains damage based off of status effects. And this is a multi-target fight where you can get two status effects on people. So if they all have Silence Gun and Slow Gun, Penalty Snipe does about 7k per hit. Yeah, Mug Time is 100% slow chance. It is fantastic. Uh, used to be not a good ability to make. Now I say we have so many major orbs, it's worth dropping that for at least the two uses for slow conditions. Though sometimes, you know, a knight with slow gun is an easier thing to work into the party. So that's why I do that instead. Uh, anywho, Zen mission. Because I'm feeling pretty alright. Yes, thief skills have gotten very, very, very strong. Uh, I think it was when ultimates, ultimate pluses started being a thing. That's when thieves started getting really strong. So, um, I'm going a little bit more all out here, obviously, but it's a very similar party setup. Uh, just, you know, characters switched around. Where's my Prince? There's Prince Green. Cool. Uh, this is one of those things that if I hadn't been doing Sid missions on videos so often now, uh, I would have been like, eh, it works. <laughs> Take my word for it. But, might as well. Uh, which 12 banner is better? Uh, stick around for like 20 minutes. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do a banner review at the end. I I generally go through each one because I actually don't really look at the banners before my videos. Uh, really helps to get a really really nice look at them. And yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, you mentioned you you asked earlier, but. Um, I was in the middle of a boss fight. Sometimes I miss stuff in the chat. Sorry about that. Uh, 
I like to do the banner reviews at the end of the uh, of the stream because it helps me to wind down uh, if fights are particularly uh, hectic. All right, so we want Ash to get this again, and should flow pretty pretty smoothly. Don't like those ATB bars. Not very good bars. Bars could be bigger. This is pretty much going to be the same execution uh, for the most part. Uh... Oh. Piss, I forgot to put... I forgot to put the resist accessories on. And oops, all silence. Uh, this is why... Normally, I have... Uh, my consultant review my, uh, my parties. I, I, I usually don't make him look at the... Uh, <laughs> the Sid Mission Parties. I'm curious, can I make this a little stupider? Hell yeah, I can. He's now a glass cannon but I'll take it. I mean, we can trade off that pretty easily that way. Or we can just say fuck it. <laughs> this is newbie having fun with the game. So I remember last time when he was doing like 7k with each hit. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, but this was the fight I was hoping to be able to hone. Um, meltdown for. Unfortunately, that, that ended up not being possible. why we put the pause in. Nice. Yeah, this is this is way better bar wise. Hell yeah. Now, of course, the only really annoying thing here is she has to go twice 
before both of your connections start doing this damage. Um, perfect. That's who we wanted it to hit. Let's do another one of those. Yeah, because she has to... Hey, Fenful. You're just in time for the Sid mission run. Yep. Vulnerable to ice. That checks out. Alright. Time to unleash hell on this goober. They'll never see it coming. What if he had a gun? The move is good. I'm glad I came up with such a dumb strategy for this fight. Or I found a dumb strategy for this fight. Um, because fuck. Death and Snipe doing that much damage is illegal. Just, I have Meltdown. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I have a gun. Oh shit! Well... <laughs> That's hubris for ya! I think I'll be fine. Though, interesting note there. Machina skills cast slightly faster than black magic. I'll have to remember to note that down. So even though it was a, a small fuck up, like, hey, information gathering. <laughs> There's not much that's faster than a gun. Yeah, this is when the boss is starting to get a little rude. Oh, I think that just gave me the win. Oof, uh. <laughs> that boss becomes really rude in the later phases. Even without haste.
Gotta be sure to write that one down, too. Uh, Penelope's a girl. Uh, but that's not a shared Medica. That is, uh, her unique. It was her first thing. It's, um... Mediocre. Well, actually, it's, it's it's okay. It's a full, it's a uh, Cura, I think, level. Very weak Medica, but it has a, a slight attack boost to it. So, useful in that way. Um, here, I'll show it off real fast before I go into stuff. I don't think you're going to find it on any banner anymore because it's kind of been weeded out. But yeah, it's uh, War Dance. Uh, temporary, temporarily raise the... Attack of the party members, moderate amount, and we store a moderate amount. So I want to say that's a 30% boost. Her default is also still pretty alright because it raises her mind. Uh, but that's like one that you... I don't know, it's hard to fit that in. I didn't really have a lot going into that. Uh, this was just for jokes, if I needed it. Anyway, let's look at some banners. After I get, stop sitting on my foot. Ow. Okay. Uh, banner 1. Uh, I remember looking at this. Uh, which is real nice. So this is Pinello's thing. So one thing that's really nice about it is in Realm it has silence and confuse resist. Those come up r rarely. Though we did just see one in this event. However, having it isn't bad. Though, the real nice thing about this is actually the break. Um, instant use heal to all allies gives them a 200 HP buffer and gives them physical blink. This is stupid. This is like, literally, uh, save. Save, like, your party from the brink of death. Right there. That's a panic button. Uh, Perseus Bow is uh, five range hits to all targets. Uh, hyper Break, so it does all five statuses. Does that do anything extra on the end? No. Okay. And then it is a attack down and resistance down on the uh, on the things. So that'll stack, and then you just need to bring a magic and a power, or a magic and a fool on her. And you have the makings to make a really good magic support right there. Mainly for the resistance down. Uh, Nightbringer. Let's go bronze. Aside from the small boost of damage, uh, we got eight hits. Entrance, dark, non-physical, or non-elemental. Uh, lower their dark resistance. Hell yeah. Uh, four physical dark attacks, remove delay, so cast faster, and one hit and heal, which has darkness on it, so that's nice for boosts. This one's less good if you get it. Nice to bring to dark bosses, um, but without the in dark, though I guess he feeds into his own thing because he'll weaken them. And that'll give him weakness on the commands, and then he feeds. And it does make him self-sufficient. Uh, though for a knight, uh, having to self-cast your 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 uh, your taunt, not attached to your break, is a little bit less good. Though if I pulled this, I'd be happy. I wouldn't mind pulling this. Let me let me let me get that straight away. Uh, and yeah, Imperils are the same type stack now. They didn't use to. Uh, they stack up to three times, so you can make a boss 60% weak to an element. What this means is if a boss is resistant, 50% resistant, you can, in fact, make him 10% weak to an element by stacking enough resists. Uh, there was a fi funny lost version of the Hind fight where we made Hind 10% weak to Lightning and then just ignored his, uh, his shifting gimmick. Uh, anywho, uh, Penelope's Burst is a 8 white magic holy hit and a moderate amount of HP restored. Uh, it also raises the party's mind and magic, which is very nice, 
though it's only a 15% boost, that stacks with a lot of stuff. Divine Twist and Mending Dance, uh, Type to White Magic, are a 4 hit and raise the user's mind even further, and then a Cure level AoE. Pretty, pretty alright. It, it, it's a uh, very offensive uh, healer break, so that's why I'm like less inclined to it. But if you pull it, it's, it's a healer break and it gets the job done. Uh, that said, used on a Holy Week boss, this is actually pretty fantastic. Vandal Knife. Uh, instant 6 hit, lower their attack and defense by a large amount. That's stacking. I always say stacking debuffs are fantastic. If you pull this and you don't have anything else for Vaughn, that's pretty nice. The Bronze Helm is 5 dark, non-elemental, and infused with dark. I think this is the second fucking infused with dark that he has. So, yeah. That's alright. Chaos Blade is uh, 4 hits. High chance to interrupt. This is probably the weakest item yet on the banner. Uh, we'll see how the other two fare, because I, I guess it's only high chance. It is not 100% chance, it seems. So, yeah. It does add a small boost to dark damage, so there is that. Yoichi Bow. Pinpoint. I don't, I don't have this one, I don't think. Mm. Alright, it's a lightning apparel. Eight lightning hits and lightning apparel. That's alright, that synergizes really well with Ash. Golden Axe is... Wait a minute. Oh, hold up a second. Okay. Fulminating Oblivion and... Fulminating Darkness. Three hits, dark to all targets. Temporarily raise the caster's defense and attract... Alright, so it is uh, three range physical hits and Sentinel. Yes, good. Uh, Sentinel is a good buff to have on a break. It will save your party a lot of the time. Yeah, it's an okay banner. Uh, there's definitely some weak ones on there, like the Chaos Blade is pretty meh. Uh, all Dragoon moves are ranged, correct. Alright, save the Queen. This is a OSB. Massive holy damage to one target, deal more for each holy attack that has been made. That is fairly easy for Bosch to achieve. Uh, so this is a pretty good OSB. Uh, Holy is a very common element, so hell yeah, actually. Princely Rhymant. Uh, large HP, restore, grant a barrier. Alright, so debuff, evade to the party. So Medica, debuff, evade. Instantly restore HP large amount and a standard Medica. Uh, that's pretty alright. The uh, debuff barrier is fantastic, honestly. Um, and then this. This is really good. I like the instant heals and I like the medicas. So yeah, that's a pretty good medica. Not top of the line. Not a, not a top of the line healer burst, but like definitely in the upper echelons. Yes, that uh, that is way better of an OSB condition than lightnings. That's for sure. Holy Lance. Six range holy hits, non elemental. Uh, infused with holy. Yeah, okay. Uh, four hits. Deals five if they're weak or vulnerable. Uh, two hits. And temporarily counter physical attacks. So he can taunt and retaliate through this. Eh. I'd say if something had... I, I honestly can't recall, because who can remember every single break? Uh, if one had an HP shield on the entrance, I like that better. 
because there are few and far between situations where you can't avoid status effects a different way. Uh, though those situations, it is extremely useful. Uh, like I said, upper echelons, easily. I don't think second best, but, you know, opinions. Status, status, don't get me wrong, status of eight is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I have opinions about Ishtola, but Ishtola's is also very good. I don't like the stone skin effect, because I like to get punched to build meter. Um, so HP shield, I like more than, uh, stone skin. Anyway, we're getting off track. Uh, this one's okay. Uh, Bosch is always kind of weird, because he's not really a knight. He has knight 5, but a lot of his abilities don't really sort of lean towards knight. As you can see here, he's kind of a damage dealer. Though the counter, you can combine with Guy Cross, and that can be pretty good. Uh, Vayne's Gloves. Vayne is a very weird person. Uh, you get 8 Dark Knight Elemental Entrance infused with Dark. Uh, Command 1 is a 4 hit Physical that steals health. Command 2 is a 4 hit Magic that steals health. Um, because Vaunt, Vayne, is a split character. Still, uh, for a... One moment. Aside from, say, uh, Sid Reigns, this is probably one of the best dark bursts in the game. Uh, you can build Vayne either way that you want to for a fight. And his burst is still fantastic. Um, he's pretty self-sufficient once he's in burst mode. And combine that with, like, a Memento Mori or a Dark Pact. And... Fuck. He'll destroy... He'll destroy bosses. Easily. Defender. I don't remember this one. Uh, six range hits. And, eight, and physical blink. I, I, like, I like blink effects. And for a super soul break, if you've got nothing better, this is pretty good. No, like, I'm not even kidding. Like, next to Sid Reigns, this is pretty fantastic. You cast this, and he's... Never fucking dying. He'll keep himself alive. And the fact that it also infuses dark is fantastic. I love this. I pulled this myself uh, way back on the last dungeon update. And I'm eager to find a place to fucking fit Vayne in. You know? Because as soon as I find a spot for him, he is moving in there and staying forever. He is my now go-to darkness guy if I'm not doing videos. Speaking of which, his Super Soul Break, which I also pulled. Um, five hits, physical or magic, matter on what is higher. Remove delay from actions for all your allies. Hell yeah. Quick cast on everyone. Fuck them up. Staff the Magi, uh, manufa manufactured marble. Uh, protect shell and berry and uh, stone skin. Yeah, this is great at the beginning, this is great later in the fight, this will keep you going. The biggest downside here is because it's stone skin, you're not building meter, but aside from that, you're staying alive, and as long as you be, uh... Uh... Bring, like, Life Siphon or Wrath, uh... Yeah, that'll keep you alive. Personally, I maybe, uh, rank this lower. Uh, than the other ones, but that's because of my own fucking <laughs> issue with stone skin effect. But no, that's that's pretty okay break as well. Uh, Heart of Gold is six hits. Infuse the user with fire. Yeah, it's alright. I think that's just an upgrade of his older Super Soul Break. Or no, is that his burst that infuses? I can't remember anymore. I think his burst, his burst infuses his old Super Soul Break imperiled. That's right. And Plat Shield is fantastic. Apocalypse, attack, defense up. This stacks. Fucking great. This banner is fantastic, actually. Um, this banner is pretty good. If you want to pull for any of the uh, these characters, this is the perfect banner to do it on. Fucking Bosch, Bosch Vane, and Larsa, and also starring both here. Fucking let's see what I got.
Damn. Oh well. <laughs> Trash. That's a heavy armor. For some reason, that's a heavy armor. Um, that's a trash item. Anywho, I think that's a video. We moved through everything really nice and swiftly. Uh, I have been needing that for a long time now. So let's do an outro. Thank you everyone for stopping by. That was the Final Fantasy 12 event. Next time we got Final Fantasy 10, uh, which prepare yourselves because that event is going to be harder, way harder than anything we've seen before. I'll see you then.